Hi, welcome back to Dive Twine. I'm Dave. So this is, I think, the sixth installment of Just Show Me the Licks. And that's our plan today. We're working from the practice loop and the progression and the skills from the lesson uh, last weekend, just a few days ago. And um, if you want to, if this is your first time or you're just kind of jumping in here, look in the description of this video and you'll, you'll see um, how we do that. Each weekend um, on this channel, there's a, a full lesson. It's usually about 20 minutes long where we really drill into a topic and really kind of show you the theory and, and the skills that support that. And then you work on that for a couple of days. And then, um, you know, if you, if you like the groove or whatever it was about, and you got some things under your fingers with the scales and the chords and stuff, then we come back and I just show you like some, some licks so that you can just, uh, you know, have some fun just practicing over that loop and stuff. If you're not following the channel all the time, that's okay too, because um, this stuff will, you know, make sense on its own as well. Um, so I'm going to zoom in here in just a minute and um, we'll take a look at some of these ideas for this D minor progression. All right. So these first two licks I'm going to show you, they're they're based on the same kind of timing and stuff. So, and they're really almost identical to what was in the, uh, the demo section of that video over the weekend. Usually I don't go back and copy that, you know, verbatim, but uh, these are just really good examples and people said they liked them. So I'm just going to slow them down and show you kind of, you know, how to play them, but also a couple of ideas about kind of why they have a richness um, melodically, okay, without getting too, you know, deeply into it. But let me just play those first couple of measures there, or times around. So it starts on B flat. just said it starts on B flat, but right, those notes are part of this D minor, right? So there's some real kind of foreshadowing and leading that this is, I'm already playing something that's kind of the resolving chord at the end of the line of chords, right? And that, that kind of works, right? It kind of pulls you up to to that sound so if you look at this d minor chord in this form it's just those top three strings so i switched my fingers around right but it's then i'm just taking some notes really out of that d natural minor scale that's um featured in that previous lesson over the weekend and I'll put this stuff up in the um, description part of this video to the diagrams for this. But it was that. Okay. And like I said, if you go back and watch that, that other one um, from a couple days ago, it really gets into that. So. And the timing is kind of a couple of notes pick up and then like a triplet. Right, but the triplet's kind of stretched over a couple of beats. You know, don't worry yourself about trying to make an exact count of that because it's a little bit of a, uh, a, 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 not a polyrhythm, but it's, it's a little, it's stretched over a, a couple of um, beats in that measure. But the feeling of it is like the downbeat of the measure and then kind of the and of... Mm. <laughs> So if you're counting it, one, two, three, uh, just right after that downbeat. This is a really neat way to come in, right? Then following that, I'm just going, uh, um, 
okay? A lot of that, those, you know, stylistic things, the bend and the slide, the notes are, there's not that many notes in there. It's kind of a blues approach, right? Not, you know, there's three notes involved in that, but there's different ways of getting to it. So, and at the end, I think I was sliding it, and then before that, I bent it. So, you know, do your own thing, but something like this. One. Let me just play that a couple times slow, all right? Okay. Now that stuff could be played in a different... That makes more sense, actually. I didn't really, you know, I was just going to demonstrate this the idea that we always try to hit on that we can um, uh, do things in different places, but that actually kind of almost makes more sense because you get to bend the G string, which is, you know, a little sweeter. But if you like that twang, that's a little brighter. I like that sometimes. You get down here, you get that, that kind of a little more country shine from the sound of these higher strings. Makes sense. So one more time slow on that. Okay, or... Or any combination of bends and slides that that you want to do. Each time you come around, if you repeat that lick, do it a little different. You got a whole another another lick, you know, that you can use. So after that, I did one with a B flat triad in here. So that B flat is. I'm just again using some some other extra adding some scale tones in there. You see that that's kind of the theme of the motif of this, right? And so that same timing. Uh boom. And a uh, up. I'm singing the wrong note. A, there's a rhythmic motif to it, right? It's the same feeling of stuff, but with different notes, right? Different parts of that scale and using off, off of different triads. But they'll both fit in a lot of parts of the progression. So let's just take those two things and kind of, you know, riff around with it for a minute. kind of, you know, doing a little bit more wandering around. But the, the two licks you can really take away from that and practice are... And... Yeah, they both have the sweet ways of landing on that C chord, that second chord, right? And, you know, if you really want to get into it, you know, see if you can identify which chord tones those, those, those are over that C. Huh? That sounds good, doesn't it? And, you know, the root would sound fine, you know. But that just really makes it, that note stand out. That beat. 
Okay. Well, that's the idea with those. Now, then the other thing I wanted to show you was more in our in our, our old, you know, stomping grounds up here. We we're just doing some kind of bluesy bend and stuff. And then I just wanted to show you this one really kind of, um, you know, very Dire Straits-like um, way of kind of doing some hammers and stuff in here. So we just did something like... This won't be so much like a, a whole, you know, eight measures of stuff that you need to copy exactly. More, more of the, the mechanics and the, the, the essence of it. So, well, let me, let me say this first. We're in this. Our old friend, my minor pentatonic. In, in D minor and then um, here's how we can kind of break this down um, you know stuff like that so just get loosened up with these bends Last week's just show me the licks, actually, where we did a lot of, you know, pentatonic bends. You can do like a little pull up. So first, you know, just when you got your loop on, just go after stuff like that. showing you you know note for note right there but that's the the idea first you want to be you want to be comfortable bending here and here you know here's one okay Don't worry about doing it real fast. Even when you're playing over the track, don't try to do the trills real fast at first. Do like... Okay. So you're just working in that scale, that basic shape, but you're really, you know, um, investigating the the bends, then okay, that kind of stuff. This is the last thing I'm going to show you here today because you know that's a lot, a lot of stuff that you can do on your own to just really explore all that. But this, and let's just break this down to something that we can really practice, you know. So you're you you're. you're Take it one string at a time. So if we're on this string, let's let's say you're kind of doing a one of a staccato note there. There's a bunch of different things that you can do rhythmically, but that's the thing you want to get real comfortable with is hitting that note and then. Um, going to that next note down in that pentatonic scale and hammer it and pull off it like Now you 
start throwing a little bit of that in there here and there with those bends and you're just going to find your own you know way of using that stuff but that's a, a routine you can practice with find a routine that you can do with the scale and it just gets it just naturally makes you land on and emphasize all those good bluesy notes in there doesn't have to be real fast either at first Between, right? Slowly. Okay. I know this is a lot. I mean, I'm playing a lot of stuff, right? But when you go about practicing this yourself, just you know, focus on the parts that are really pointed out as being the, the, the essential aspects of it. And, um, you know, play this through a couple times. Then I'll put the practice loop at the end of this one, too. And I think that even though I showed just some, sort of some, you know, a lot of material there, um, kind of loosely, those ideas, if you really just kind of you know, trust your own, your own choices. It's kind of, you're going to come up with some really cool stuff. Here's a little bit more. kind of cool here is you hear things that sound so complex when you listen to a recording and it, it but then when you see how it can take place within such a simple structure like that pentatonic scale or something it really demystifies it right and you can see that it's really about the stylization of it right it's not about having a complex system of notes to play right it's about just, you know, digging down deeper into your, 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 uh, you know, soul of what you're playing and connecting that feeling to your hand. <laughs> okay. It's easy to say that when you've been playing a long time. And I, I understand that it's not, I never want to come off like this is something that's just, you know, should be simple and automatic it's not that but i want you to you know be confident that hey you know i'm gonna do this man i'm not just gonna i'm not just you know doing the kind of the, the the b rate stuff here and then someday i'll do that no this that pentatonic scale is well that's your whole guitar world if you're creative enough with it you know so just one example appreciate you have fun with this I look forward to hearing from you throughout the week, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.